This video was brought to you by Indently.io. Learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be learning about how we can annotate functions properly in Python using the callable type. And this type is a bit more complex than the other types that you will probably encounter in Python. So it's definitely worth a dedicated video. Now, usually when you import the callable type, you will use the typing module. So from typing, import callable which frickin' makes sense because it's used for typing. But as of Python 3.9, this is now considered a deprecated approach. So we just need to stay calm and <sighs> it's just so stupid that this is considered a collection now. So what we actually have to do is import from collections.abc the callable type. That's just how things are. So I just have to be an adult and accept it. Anyway, this is the type that we're going to be using to annotate objects as being callable. And you might be wondering, when would you want to do this? Well, imagine you have a function that's called run, and this function actually takes another function as an argument. Now we're only going to execute that function, so this function's going to return none. And inside here, we're going to call the function that we take as an argument and I just deleted everything. Now this works perfectly fine. It's going to accept a function and it's going to execute it as soon as we run the run function. But as far as the code editor knows, this is of type any, which means you can literally insert anything you want and the editor will not complain. So you can run, let's say 10, and that's going to be perfectly acceptable. We're not going to get any complaints from the code editor. But this is quite silly because when we run it, we're going to get a type error that an integer is not callable. And that makes sense. We need to actually insert something that is callable for this to work. So to annotate this as a function that should be callable or a variable that should be callable, we can add the callable type. And from that point forward, anything that's not callable will give you some squiggly lines. Or if you run mypy, mypy is going to flag that. So it's a type that's incredibly useful for the linters. But what we did here wasn't really that specific. All we did is annotate this variable or this object as something that's actually callable. But what if we want to annotate this function as a callable, which takes specific arguments and returns something specific? Well, for that, we have some special syntax that we need to learn and that we need to follow. For example, next we're going to learn how we can create a callable that accepts one argument and returns nothing. And to do that, we need to use square brackets. And inside the square brackets, we need to create more square brackets. And inside these square brackets, we need to create even more square brackets. Now at that point, I'm just joking, but inside these square brackets, you actually insert the arguments that you want this function to accept. For example, if this is a function that takes an integer as an argument, you would insert it inside these square brackets. And then you would add a comma and the type that you want to return will be the second argument inside these square brackets. So now we have a function that accepts an integer as an argument and returns nothing, which means we're going to get some squiggly lines here because we did not insert an integer here. And to fix this, we're actually going to add n, which will be of type integer and pass it in here. And that would be the proper way to annotate this. But of course, let's create an example of something that would actually fit in to this function. For example, we can have something that's called print integer and it's going to take n of type int and return none. This follows the signature of our callable type. It takes an integer, as you can see here, and returns none. Then here we can print printing n. Now, if we were to use the run function, we can pass in the print integer function and pass in the number that we want to print. And this will work just fine. If we were to run it, it's going to print that number using the function that we specified. But if we were to add something such as the sum function, that's going to give us some squiggly lines because that's not a function that works with the signature that we provided for the callable. Now, what if you want to accept more than one argument in your function? Well, to do so, you just have to add a comma inside the square brackets and add the argument that you want to insert. And this will follow the order of your function signature. So here we have two ints that our callable accepts and it still returns none. But to make sure that this actually works, I'm going to change n to a and then add b, which will be of type integer. Now, function is going to take a and b. Then let's create a function that follows this signature. So here we're going to create something called add. It's going to take a type integer, b of type integer. It's going to return none. Then we can just print a plus b. And just like that, we can run add 
with the numbers that we want to add. So 10 and 20, and that's going to run perfectly fine or not really because apparently I'm missing something here. And that is the colon. But once we add that colon, it's going to run perfectly fine. And this is very important because if we were to have another function called sample, and this was to return an integer, and we just return one. If we were to insert sample here, that's going to raise a flag in our code editor. And it's going to tell us that this does not work. We expected a type that takes two integers and returns none. But what you inserted was a function that doesn't take anything and returns an integer. And these warnings are crucial during the development phase. I mean, at least if you don't want any unexpected behavior to occur in your program. Because again, without this type, we could insert sample and we wouldn't get any warnings regarding that. But next I'm going to show you how you can create a callable that accepts no arguments and that returns a Boolean. So to create a callable that accepts no arguments, you just have to insert an empty pair of square brackets. And to change the return type, you just change it to whatever you want. Now what we're going to do is remove these two arguments and just call the function. But of course, since it returns a Boolean, you might want to grab that result. So result of type Boolean equals function, and then we can print the result. Now to actually use this, we need to create a function called, I don't know, is online. It's going to return a Boolean, and it's going to return true. It's going to simulate that we're checking to see if a user is online. So now if we were to run this, we can pass in that function is online and we're not going to get any complaints from the code editor because this is a function that accepts no arguments and returns a Boolean, just as we specified inside the signature. So when we run this, we're going to get true back. Next, let's move on to how we can create a callable that accepts a string and an integer and that returns a string. So to do that, I'm just going to quickly just add an ellipsis here and we're going to add that signature. So string and integer and returns a string. Then we can create a function that actually follows that signature. So def, let's say multiply text. And here we're going to take text of type string and amount of type integer. And that's going to return to us a string. As you can see, this is the signature we want to follow inside the callable type. I hope this is slowly starting to make sense. It's not rocket science or anything. You're just literally inserting the types of the function signature inside the callable. Then here we can return text times amount. And to actually make this work, we're going to create a character of type string and assign it the value of x. Then the result will be of type string and that will equal the function, which is going to take a character and an amount, which we did not create just yet. So we'll just go up here and type in n of type integer. Then we can print that result. So this time we can type in multiply text and here we're just going to insert 10. Or that's not true because we need to insert the function first, multiply text and then 10. And this is wrong because it should be a comma and not parentheses because we're using the run function. I have really messed this up. So multiply text 10. This is what I was trying to get to. And now when we run this, we should get x multiplied by 10 back, which will give us this string. And once again, if we were to insert a function that does not follow that signature, such as the print function, we're going to get a warning because it does not give us back a string and it does not take this as an argument. Moving on, I'm going to show you how we can create a callable that takes any amount of arguments, but is still very specific with the return type. So let's just remove all of this once again and take this away. Then inside the callable signature, what we're going to do instead of using an extra pair of square brackets is enter an ellipsis followed by the return type. So in this case, we want to create a function that takes any amount of arguments and that returns none. And then we're going to specify args. A good example of a function that actually follows this is the print function. And args are going to be of type integer. Then what we can do is call that function with the arguments. And with that, we can run the print function with the arguments that we choose. So one, two, and three. And since print follows this signature, it's going to work perfectly fine. And finally, with all of this knowledge, I'm going to show you how you can annotate a Lambda expression. And your code editor is probably going to complain that you should not assign lambdas to a variable. But I've seen some code bases that do it, and maybe it's going to be the best option for your project. So I'm just going to show you how to do it in case you need to do it. For example, we might create a function called multiply. And what multiply is going to do is multiply any string by the number that we specify. 
but here we're going to create it as a callable. So for this Lambda, we're going to take integer and string as arguments. And that's going to return to us a string, which will equal Lambda n and text. And then all we have to do is multiply n by text. So once again, it follows the signature that we have here. And what we really did is say that n was of type integer and that text was of type string. But of course, in a Lambda, you can't do this. It doesn't work. So the only alternative we have is to create this callable type, which tells the code editor that n is of type integer and that text is of type string. Now we can just remove that and that. And then obviously here we're returning a string, which we wrote here. If we were to return a number such as 10, we're going to get some syntax highlighting because we did not return a string. As you can see, we returned an int instead of a string. But now when we actually try to call this function, we can type in multiply and we can put 10 by Z and it's going to work perfectly fine. Or we need to print that if we want to see anything. And if we were to enter another number, and if we were to change Z to 10, with the MyPy extension, we're going to be able to catch that error because this is not of type string. If you're using vanilla PyCharm, then it's probably not going to pick this up. I always recommend you use a static type checker because when you do, in general, it's going to be much more powerful than whatever your code editor has to offer. So in PyCharm, I'm actually using the MyPy plugin, which just gives me an extra layer of security when I'm programming in PyCharm. But let's change that back to indently so that the next time we run this, we get the best output of all time. Anyway, that just about covers everything I wanted to talk about in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below whether you have any other questions regarding the callable type. But otherwise, with all that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.